going on, guys? It's Eric Turner from Cover One, and this week we have a special guest, none other than Lorenzo Alexander. What's up, Zoe? How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great, brother. Just uh, living the dream. <laughs> so uh, you had to work today, huh? What did you guys do today? Yeah, we got back to it. Had, um, I think, our seventh OTA, um, and we had last week off. It was a veteran week off. But uh, today, just, you know, just continue to install the defense, continue to learn each other, continue to get a good grasp on the new system offense, defense, and special teams, and uh, just want to continue to uh, change the culture. And that's all about consistency. And I think uh, Coach McDermott and the whole coaching staff does a great job each week of reiterating playoff caliber, having those high standards. Absolutely. It's not mundane. You know, each, each day they find a new way of something to emphasize that we can do a little bit better if we want to find ourselves in the playoffs and hopefully playing for a championship this season. That's awesome to hear, and, and that's something that we've heard this whole offseason since this regime's gone in is, you know, attention to detail, you know, playoff caliber. And, it, it, you know, McDermott does seem like the type of guy that is obviously detail-oriented. So I'm sure, you know, practices must be down to a T, like this is where you need to be. This is, a, you know, how long this uh, segment is. That, that's, that's good to see, and I know that a lot of teams do that. I'm not saying that's yeah, yeah. Uh, abnormal, but it's, it's great to have, you know, uh, on track, uh, on uh, schedule for you guys to, uh, you know, okay, this is what we need to attack today at this moment in time and, and, yeah. and go at it, you know? It definitely makes it better for uh, the players and the young guys uh, that you have a clear vision and a structure in place to accomplish that, those goals. I think sometimes, you know, coaches can be all over the place. And you don't quite know what the vision and what we're trying to accomplish within a practice. But with uh, McDermott, um, it's very clear team meeting every morning lays it out and then everybody kind of falls in line and the coaches make sure that we're emphasizing those things in uh in the meetings and going over different uh situations whether it's red zone whether it's two-point conversion like we did today um just making sure that guys are situationally smart so that when we face these these uh type of plays in the game you know how to execute because obviously we know things happen on the field where the, the communication isn't there and that's when you need your linebackers you know your middle linebacker your quarterback to be able to dial up, up a play without needing to uh, actually hear from the coordinator. And those are the ty type of things that we're trying to make sure that we have um, available to us this year so there's not a lot of uh, confusion uh, when things aren't going uh, the way that we have designed uh, with the great week of practice. Right, and it does start at practice. You know, well, after all the film I've watched on this defense, there's one thing that was always on film, and you saw it, and that was communication. And that's something that, you know, we didn't necessarily have the best of last year. and when you get into the heat of the moment, when, you know, you're in that third down situation, you're in that crunch moment, it is a game of situation and right. your team has to be through that. And so that type of detail oriented practice, it'll only make you that much more, you know, more prepared for uh, game day. Exactly. And then making sure that we're all on the same page. Cause even yeah. if we have bad communication, as long as we communicate, even if we're all wrong, we're wrong together, we can get through the down because we have the type of guys that can, uh, make plays and, and, and get us to the next down and, and save the coaches or another player if possible. Right. So your career has been quite the roller coaster. I'm sure uh, um, you've, you've definitely, you know, enjoyed every up and down of it, uh, yeah. I'm sure, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's made me who I am, made me have a unique story. Uh, it's definitely been a blessing to be able to play in this league for 13 years. Um, it hasn't been, I guess, Disney-esque in a sense. <laughs> in a sense it has, in a sense it hasn't been. You know, I wasn't uh, – the first round draft pick, you know, growing up inner city, and then you finally make it, and you're the first round, and you can buy your mom a house. Right. You know, I came in undrafted um, as a pretty much as a camp body um, and had to grind from the bottom up. And uh, throughout the years, I've, you know, come across a lot of great coaches. You know, everybody knows about my relationship with London Fletcher, but guys like Kedrick Golston, Antoine randall uh Mike Sellers, uh, guys that you don't, may even not know about, Rock Cartwright, that have really poured into me and helped me become a better uh, football player um, Danny Smith um, is another one that's a, the, uh, in Pittsburgh now oh yeah so I've been around a lot of great coaches and he actually was in Buffalo too yeah you know about so I've been around a lot of great coaches and players um, throughout my career to really help me and um, you know I, I guess if I had to pick one moment where it kind of solidified and got my chance it was a preseason game in 2007 I hadn't made a roster yet right we were playing the Tennessee Titans in the preseason game and uh, made a, a great inside move. The back picked me up after I had beat the guard. Uh, he knocked my helmet off. Uh, <laughs> but the quarterback felt the the pressure and started scrambling. Right. I immediately took off after the quarterback trying to make a tackle. And my boy Reed Dowdy came up as a safety. We kind of get there at the same time. I'm going into tackling. Right. And Reed Dowdy hits me in my face. and I got this big gash. 
kind of put me on the map with the coaches because they they saw at that point I was willing to go, you know, go out there, play hard, no matter if I had my helmet on or not. And that's really when I got my opportunity to play and actually make the roster. And then from there, I've never looked back. And each time just trying to figure out a way to get on the field and, and solidify myself, whether that was a utility guy, you know, playing every position, pretty much known to man outside of quarterback. Right. Um, you know, being a, a special teams demon, uh, being a, you know, a backup linebacker and eventually earning a starting spot uh, in Arizona. And then even getting hurt and kind of falling off and nobody knows who, who I am anymore. Forgetting that, I, you know, I once was a pro bowler and then right. having a resurgence in Buffalo last year. So it's been a roller coaster of ups and downs, but I definitely appreciate every moment. Uh, God has definitely blessed me with uh, situations and adversities and uh, blessings to, to really have a uh, unique career, you know, to say the least. Definitely. And your hustle is, I mean, honestly, it's your middle name. That's what, you know, got you uh, onto, a, onto a squad as a special teamer. And then, yeah. of course, you know, like you had just mentioned, that story you just, uh, you know, talked about. It's, uh, it's definitely prolonged your career, and you've done whatever it took to get on the field. And, you know, there aren't a lot of guys that can say that, especially I'm talking from – you know, where you started your career in, in, was it 2005? Yes. You know, coming into league in 2005 as a defensive lineman and just that, you know, overall change in your body and your approach to the game uh, to get on the field. I mean, that's, that's pretty courageous, man. And I'm sure a lot of Bills fans, that's why you resonate with Bills fans, you know, that blue collar community. Uh, we love players like that and like yourself. So uh, it's yeah, definitely an awesome, love, awesome story, love, Lorenzo. I fell in love with the city, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Definitely. So I want to fast forward just a second, though. What do you plan on doing after career? I don't want to fast forward it because I feel like you, you just, uh, you know, you're just getting started as far as, uh, you know, as a yeah, starter. Not much more time uh, before my body decides it wants to give out. You know, I, you know, the way I play is, uh, you know, uh, is very dangerous and, right. and bruises. You know, Mondays and Tuesdays aren't very easy for me. Uh, the older I get, just turned 34. But We'll see. I uh, take great care of myself. But uh, once it's all said and done, definitely want to get into some broadcasting. We want to continue to do my community service, philanthropy work that I do in the communities, um, wherever, I, wherever I decide to live. Uh, but, you know, just doing things like this, you know, coming on with you, doing podcasts. Um, I have my own podcast called Capital Punishment. I also do another one called Train with the Best. And then when I'm at home in D.C., I do um, uh, co-hosting or guest celebrity hosting uh, on uh, CBS radio. So, try to keep my, my hands in it because I know it's a skill set. Um, people think it's easy to talk, especially if you have your own show and trying right. to carry a show for four or five <laughs> hours by yourself. Yeah. Um, it is a skill that you have to do, and the only way you can do it, obviously, is by practicing. So I try to put myself out there as much as I can. I can't forget about my guy, Sal Capaccio, who I, who I do uh, out of bounds with during the season on Tuesdays night during the season. So um, definitely get a lot of reps. Yeah, you're definitely uh, putting in uh, the time and the dues, which I, I don't think anyone's surprised that you're, you know, making your rounds, getting your practice in. It's, it is, an, you know, an easy thing to do, an easy skill or trait to have. So, um, you know, I'm not surprised that you're, you're putting in the time to, you know, sharpen those skills. And, and Capital Punishment, that's a, it's a great podcast. If you guys uh, haven't tuned into that, definitely subscribe to that on SoundCloud and whatnot. It's a, it's a great podcast to listen to. It's just, it's just different because – you know, not many players have podcasts and to, to kind of get the insight that you guys uh, give out, that you and Kedrick give out, especially like it's the post-draft right. uh, podcast that you guys put out. That was interesting to see because I know, you know, maybe you guys don't get to, you know, cover the draft or get to know these players that are coming into the league like we do. Mm -hmm. But um, to hear, you know, your thoughts on it and, and not just the players that we took in Buffalo, but how they'll fit and, and you know, the different types of roles that they may play um, or guys that are in the, the meeting rooms to help these young players, uh, you know, excel and, and, and transition to the NFL. So I, it was good to hear that. It's a great show, guys. If you don't, uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, definitely check it out on SoundCloud. Um, it, it's, it's definitely worthwhile. Um, but today, uh, I do want to shift gears here. Um, I want to talk about your role in this new defense, in this 4-3 defense. Obviously, we switched over from a 3-4, and it's, uh, it's a lot different when you say so. Yeah, I would say so, especially for me. Um, I, I, I did a little bit of it last year towards the end of the season uh, when we started kind of morphing more into a Rob Ryan type of a defense, playing off the ball, stack linebacker. Yes. Um, I also have done it um, back in Washington um, in 2011 to 2012, playing behind London Fletcher, you know, one of the best in the business. So I'm trying to tap into a lot of those things and experiences back then and just sharpening the tools. Right. Because I've been in space. I've been off the ball. 
Uh, but when you don't do something consistently, um, you're not going to be as great as you need to be. So that's why o OTAs has been really beneficial to me. Mm -hmm. uh, our coaching staff, uh, Bob Babbage has done a great job. Um, he's coached some great linebackers uh, in his own right. Absolutely. Uh, years, um, you know, you think about Lance Briggs uh, in Chicago um, <clears throat> and other guys that have, have been have been in that system. So I'm uh, – I'm getting coached up well. Sean McDermott is doing a great job being around Thomas Davis, been talking to him too. Awesome. So things are going well. Uh, you know, um, playing Sam and Will, depending on the front. Uh, a lot of cover one, cover three, four type stuff. And uh, really just want to have a lot of vision this year. Get our hands on more balls, create more turnovers, um, and give uh, Tyrod and the offense more opportunities to put up points and uh, to be able to beat teams. That's what you got to be able to do these days. Definitely. The defense sounds uh, like it's, uh, it's a lot more aggressive. Like you had mentioned, they want to force turnovers. I mean, last season they were sixth in pressure rate, which means they, they, you know, garnered pressure 29% of the time, which was sixth best. Uh, and I know their defense struggled last year overall, but to, to see that type of pressure rate um, and the turnovers that they garnered uh, on that defense, even though overall they struggled was uh, quite amazing. So it's good to see, you know, you're going to be in off the ball a little bit. And I did. I went back and watched some of that end of last season, and as you alluded to. And it looked like even that Pittsburgh game, you were yeah. you're playing a little off the ball. I even saw you matched up versus Le'Veon Bell. Hey, yeah, you know, you have to cover <laughs> whoever uh, the defense uh, deems you to. I mean, but you're not going to see nobody better than uh, LaShawn McCoy and Shady. It's true. For years. So I'm definitely getting uh, my, uh, I guess, my hands full or hands on. <laughs> with guarding somebody who's very shifty and elusive as him. So once I get onto the field and that's anybody in the league, I, I'll be fine against. If I can stay with him or, you know, at least in his vicinity. Yeah. He gets me every time. But then that's where it comes in understanding the defense. You know, do you have a rap player? You know, where's your safety playing? Is he playing uh, middle of the field or is he playing half the field or is he playing quarters? Right. And having all that information along with your skill set and talent, knowing who you are as a player, allows you to be able to cover guys a little bit better. And obviously, you're not going to be able to shut down everybody, but it gives you a better chance of making plays on the ball, understanding what everybody's doing around you. And that's what I like about this zone defense. And you mentioned, you know, knowing where your help is, knowing where the rat players, where your safeties are. If I felt like the guys that they brought in with, you know, the, as much roster turnover as there was, the guys that they brought in were highly intelligent guys. Yeah. And you got to have that in zone uh, defenders. You know, if, if you want to play a lot of zone, um, yeah. Like McDermott has, you got to know where your help is. And that's, that's, that's right. half the battle right there in his own defense, right? Exactly. Knowing where your help is and being able to disguise, making things look the same, but they're different, or making things look different, but they're the same. All right. That's why you have guys that have been in this defense um, that have a high football IQ and uh, are very versatile. So, I mean, sometimes you may have a, a safety playing corner or a corner playing safety, but you have guys that are athletic enough and understand football that are able to be uh, interchangeable pieces and, and, and you won't have a letdown because some, some safeties can't cover. Right. Some corners can't play in the box. But I think we have a good mix of guys who are able to do both, and that definitely makes it harder for um, opposing offense to game plan for guys. <clears throat> and, and that's great. You talk about versatility, and that's why – you know, I, I'm, I'm also guilty of this in, in pegging guys uh, outside linebackers, pegging yourself or, you know, yeah. Gerald Hodges says, oh, yeah, he's going to be a will linebacker. But we also have to step back as fans and realize that, you know, these outside linebackers and a lot of these positions on this defense are what? They're interchangeable. So yeah. kind of talk about, um, you know, that difference uh, this year because it seemed like last year's like roles were defined. Well, in, in, this, in this defense, you could be doing – you could be Sam on one play in one front but again, you could be a will in, in another front in the, on the very next player, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, just depending on what the coaches are dialing up with the offense, uh, how they like to attack under and over fronts. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we're we'll probably be predominantly an over front this year and just watching Carolina and how they develop throughout the season. Um, <clears throat> but each one has its own strengths. Uh, teams often like to run to the bubble. Um, but for, for me personally, um, just got to continue to, like I said, work on my eyes, work on my, my keys, reading the guard, reading the fullback. Right. Be able to play fast uh, once you, uh, you know, get all that information and is it play action, is it run, or is it just drop back and getting to where you need to be and having vision, as we talked about earlier, and, and making plays on balls. Right. And you, you mentioned the 4-3 mm -hmm. over defense. Uh, Lorenzo, are you able to see that? Yes. All right, so we're going we're gonna to set some film up here. It's uh, 12 personnel. They motion the fullback uh, up onto the line of scrimmage. 
Yep. And uh, it's uh, 12 personnel, you know, one running back, two uh, tight ends, and the ball is uh, it's into the boundary. So tell me right here, okay, in this over defense, where do we, where can we expect you predominantly? Yeah, it's starting, so it's over, so it's starting in close left. Um, I would be where number 58 is, who's Thomas Davis. Right. Um, an over defense is, is uh, a three technique to the close call in a, in a shade, as you can see, 98, I believe that is. I yep. can't the numbers and then you have yep, right here right um, star latula lays the three tech here so so basically what you're saying is the the strength uh, right off the bat was to the it's to the left on the screen here right yes sir so the three tech is to the strength right and as a wheel linebacker i always align to the open side of the field away from the strength once the tight end shifts up onto the line um this is an over front and a lot of teams like to run to the bubble and the bubble is to the side of the nose, the one technique in between the one and the five, which you can see as the guards are blocking down that big hole where the red dot is, that's yep. considered the bubble. Um, I would have made a gong call in this to take away the blocking angles of, of the guard so that he wouldn't have been able to climb the loop as easily. He would have been, the, the nose would have been playing through the guard. Right. Um, on, the, on this specific play, giving Luke a little bit more freedom to run to the ball and maybe even run through that gap and make a tackle for loss. Right, and this defensive tackle is, 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 is taught to occupy and sometimes even to the point to hold this guy so he can't climb, right? Exactly, because you want your linebackers to be able to run, but Luke is doing a great job of coming up quick, getting the double team off, and actually allows the nose to make this play. And when you have a dominant nose uh, like we have in Marcel, they have to pick their poison. Are they going to come off on the linebacker and let Marcel make this play, or are they going to stay on the double team and allow Luke or Preston in a, in a, for our team to be able to run through this gap and make a tackle for loss? That's what's scary because, uh, I mean, just imagine Marcel here with his, you know, size and speed off the snap. You're going to have Kyle in a three-tech here as an under tackle. It just, uh, it's, it, it's going to be scary. And I just don't, I don't understand how you guys aren't going to make plays because, you know what, they're going to keep you clean here. So, yeah, yeah. And that's why we have a great D-line and Shaq and Jerry in that as well. Right. Um, in this specific defense, it looks like they're playing cover four behind us. Mm -hmm. And when it's two by two like this, they're going to give us a, it's, it's, it's both safeties are, are in the run. Mm -hmm. And the safety that comes down is a safety away from the action. So in this case, it would have been 20 as he's coming down really fast. Right. Thomas is setting the edge on the other side, doing a great job of taking the double team off of uh, the end there. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see everybody's gap sound in their gaps, and uh, the running back has nowhere to go, and it's a tackle for loss or a tackle for no gain. Right. So, okay, we'll break this down even further. So if the play is going to the right side here, um, and you're Thomas Davis. Kind of talk about where your eyes are as uh, the outside linebacker to the field here. Well, I, I immediately know once I have action towards me, I have, I have to set the edge. I have the deep gap. So I'm really just trying to come down as fast as possible to get this, this uh, double team off of the tight end or off the end. Right. Knowing that the tight end is going to climb to me. So I'm really coming down as tight as possible so I can jack him up, the tight end up and set the edge as tight as possible so the, the running back would have to bounce if he decided he wanted to keep it play side. Right. So the play does come this way, obviously, and he cuts it back. So this defensive end is going to have this C-gap here, and you're talking uh, Davis because play's coming to you, has to set this edge. Obviously, Keekley's got uh, the B-gap here with the shade uh, 99 short playing in the A-gap, right? So now talk about if you were Shaq Thompson here, which in this play you probably would have started off as Shaq because uh, of the strength call, the over front. So play is going to Shaq's right. Where's your gap? My gap is the A gap. Uh, okay. On the snap of the ball, because we have this uh, safety coming down to set the edge on the outside, it becomes one gap or, yeah, one gap or one back, one gap. Right. Which is solo uh, fits. And he's running straight through there as, as, as quick as he can, getting downhill, trying to get this double team off this nose. Right. If the bar climbs too fast, especially if a guy like Kyle Williams, he'll jack the tackle up and make this, this play for a uh, tackle for loss as well. No doubt. He, he does that quite often. He can split double teams with the best of them. So Shaq's getting downhill into the A gap there. You have Star Latulale taking the B gap, occupying two guys. Uh, this DN is going to cover the C gap, correct? Exactly. Or and the safety will make him right. If he was to get cut out of there, since the safety has depth, yep. he can make him right and fit in the C gap. So he's really just playing off that end. Okay. No, I like that. That's a, that's a good run play, good uh, gap integrity. Uh, on this play to the right-hand side. So we'll show another over front here, the third and 10 situation uh, from Carolina versus Oakland last year. Again, another 12 personnel set where they motion uh, the tight end yep, over front. 
and you'll see the linebacker the switch. Right. And then, but they didn't shift the line, so it must have stayed closed right. So I don't know exactly who's playing what, because obviously Sam and Will are interchangeable in this. Right. Um, the way they are lining up, it looks like they might have kept it closed right. And uh, Thomas is playing Sam, and Shaq is playing the Will in this particular uh, defense. Yeah, and this is uh, one of those things that could have been game planned, right? If you see right. Cli Clive, I think that's Clive Walford in the backfield. He's more of a receiving tight end. They, right. Maybe they want, you know, Shaq to his side and just in case some pass coverage type of thing. Exactly. So, you know, you'd have, we'd have to talk to Sean to see what they would do. <laughs> that's definitely what it looks like because you can even see five, six, his hand is out to the right. So it's still closed right. Right. Over front. All right, so again, now the, the play is a, it's a 12 personnel, ball's on, uh, the, it's on the right hash, but it's our left uh, as far as uh, all 22 footage goes. Mm -hmm. And talk about what the defensive end is doing here and what Thomas Davis is executing here. Um, Thomas is just hammering the ball back. This is a bounce G. Um, you have a guard pulling out. Um, he's just trying to set the edge on him. You know, obviously, um, offensive linemen want you to kind of match them and run sideways, but Thomas is doing a pretty good job here of coming down and hitting uh, KO uh, head up and not running sideways and not creating a seam. Because if Thomas is running two lateral right here and then Hudson gets on 5-6, there would actually be a crease outside and, and then the running back would be up on the safety 22, what we don't want. So he's doing a great job of coming and hitting this head on, uh, making it muddy for the running back to where he has to cut back. Uh, which he really doesn't want to do with people around his feet. Definitely. And this is, uh, it's a play actually that we run a lot on offense too. You know, it's, uh, you know, you're having a down block at, at, on 99. You're having that uh, guard get out front and it's just a outside zone track for that running back, Latavius Murray. And you're right. He, he doesn't want to have to cut this back, but he presses as much as he can. But right. I mean, where's, where's Thomas uh, Davis's helmet? Where is AJ Klein's helmet supposed to be? Because even though they're pulling, you still have to what? You have to still... Well, well you, you, you definitely want to hammer everything back. Yeah. But you don't, as a, as, a, as a linebacker, especially with Thomas, you don't want to get caught up as trying to put your, your helmet actually, you know, necessarily outside. Okay. If you're trying to run for position, you, you allow KO to have power. And even though you maybe have outside contained, if Thomas was just to keep running to the numbers and to the sideline on this play, uh, Tay would have an actual crease to run through. So you yeah. would actually want to he's, – he's actually setting the edge almost with inside um, placement on this by jacking him up, stepping for power versus position. Right. You see his left hand here. He, he's got it up under him as best he can. Of course, KO. I, 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 he's, a I get, guy. he's a big he, man, so you have to come downhill and, and try to knock him back if you can. Yeah, you got to fight fire with fire. I, I mean, obviously, he's outweighed a lot, but he does a great job, of, like you said, using his hands and, and fighting with power there and holding the edge there. So, right. Uh, I would tell coaches, if they ever see this, having an outside backer that plays on the line of scrimmage or off the ball, when guys are getting overzoned, you know, don't coach your kids to, to match them with their helmet and say, oh, I'm outside, I'm outside, because you're creating that uh, uh, inside crease. Right. You want to step for power and knock him back, and then the running back is forced to make an earlier cut than he wants to, and you create cr uh, containment with the, the vertical push that you get. Right. So this inside linebacker, A.J. Klein, when he approaches this pulling uh, center here, uh, I mean, do you think he did a good job here of holding that, that gap right there, forcing the cut back? Yeah, he gets cut, but he does a great job of playing fast and getting, trying to get over the top. Um, he keeps his feet. He gets the guy to cut back. He probably, he probably was going to hit it, but he sees him trying to cut, so he's trying to protect himself there. So he, yeah. did, he needs to be. He's another body of color that the running back has to make another cut. And when you run a lateral versus this type of defense and you got speed out there, it's not going to be a big play. Yeah, it was a great, great play, good run fit, uh, getting everyone to the ball, you know, forcing that cut back. Again, it's one of those defenses where everyone's got to do their job, right? Exactly. Um, oftentimes, guys try to do too much, jump out their gap. And in this league, it's a cutback league. Um, guys are going to find the open gap. So you have to train yourself to run to your gap, even though you may see the ball go somewhere else. Most right. likely, great running backs, they find where you're not. Definitely. So – the, the, one of the things that offenses do when you play a lot of over defense like Carolina did and what you guys are going to do is what? They're going to try to run to the weak side, right, Zoe? Right. They try to, you know, run back weak, run to the bubble, uh, as we mentioned earlier, and that's the space between the nose and, and the defensive end, especially when you have a wide technique like on this backside, which you probably showed on tape with this defensive end, 76, I'm guessing. Yep. Um, 
you just create more space and you make it hard for the wheel to set the edge um, when you have a big gap like that, especially on a guard that's coming downhill on you. Um, on this specific play, the nose does a great job of penetration and actually knocking off the second puller, number 82, the, um, and allows um, the young guy, the young man to make a great play in the backfield, keeping him clean, 56, and uh, getting a good hit on the guy. But we yeah. call this a joker, which is just a counter weak. Okay, so uh, one of the things that you could do as a defensive coordinator is uh, not just put this nose tackle in the shade. I mean, he did a great job on this play. Don't get me wrong, and I expect Marcel to do this every play yep. when they run to the weak side. But you could also kick this guy out a little bit more and in, in more of a G position, right, to help versus yeah. the if, you, if, if you see things on film, you can run it out of a G, mm -hmm. um, just depending on, you know, each week in the game plan and what offenses like to do. Um, but at the same time, you start playing the G, then you allow the center to get up front side um, on you as well. So it's it, true. week to week, and you kind of play those, uh, you know, chess matches with the opposing coordinator and trying to figure out what's the best position for you to make plays. And throughout the game, you can even change it because with this, you can see the tight end is deeper off the ball at number 82. Yep. We would call this a relay, alerting everybody that he's most likely going to go back. Right. Um, and then, you know, great players would just make a little adjustment or widen out a little bit, expecting a down block from the from the guard and be able to play through it even uh, um, more vertical than this and probably even have a bigger play. Right. Those are things that you just – you get a feel through during the week, but then also throughout the game you kind of get a feel where the team is trying to uh, attack you as well. That's That's – Absolutely correct. And so, is Thomas Davis here, where are his eyes? What is he looking at? What 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 do you see well, right here on now, film? He, I, it looks like it's the safety's down. So, I mean, my gap is the B gap. Um, okay. So he's looking at the guard. The guard blocks down. Um, somebody's alerting puller. He's flying up in there, just trying to jack everybody up and and trying to set the edge as tight as he can, uh, so that running back doesn't have a lot of space um, to eat up. And uh, like a Klein does a great job as too, as far as setting setting the edge even tighter uh, because of the penetration. Yeah, the running back is forced to cut back to where all the hats are, which is uh, front side or back side in this play. Yeah, that D tackle. You're right. He really blew this play up. It allowed. Uh, I think that's actually a uh, rookie David Mayo. Oh, is um, it? Oh, yeah. okay. oh, but I mean, I was when I saw this on film, like, wow, he got downhill quickly. Yep. And made a heck of a play there to um you know blow up this play but again it's team defense that d tackle um did a great job here so we went over some of the over fronts that we're going to see as as part of our base defense so uh something you also see on film i'm sure like again you know outside linebackers uh this position uh will and sam are going to be interchangeable so you're going to see some under defense so let's talk about your responsibilities uh as a sam linebacker in uh an under front and and let's start off with explain what the under front is where's that where's the the three tech going right the three technique is going away from the strength okay so he's on the open side so mm -hmm. in this call is closed right um the way we're looking at it the, the tight end is to the left so the 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 three technique is going to be opposite of the tight end you're going to right. have the shade or the one technique uh to the tight end um and two fives gotcha and, uh, Sam linebacker in this case would be me I'll be walked down on the ball over the tight end mm -hmm. in a 90 um and this is pretty much what I played all last year yeah um, on the ball outside linebacker and you know it's a it's a uh a three four four three however you want to call it because sometimes last year we'd be in a you know obviously we ran a three four and four put his hand down or Shaq would put his hand down because they knew they were the fourth rusher already Right. You know, with me standing up. So if you would look back at a lot of our tape last year, you would see this. And um, so, yeah, guys are just flying around, making great plays on this one, too. This looks like it's a, a one back, one gap, a type of defense as well. So, I mean, let's go back because this is uh, Dennison's offense. This is something you guys probably see in practice every day. Yes. This offense likes to run a lot to the weak side, right? Yes, they do. So this I mean, under defense, when I turned on the film, I saw this and I'm like, okay, they used a lot of this under, under front versus this team and this offense because they like to run a lot to the weak side. And it, make, it, it makes these runs difficult, right? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, most of the times people attack the weak side because of the bubble that we talked about. But now instead of having a space in the B gap, now you have a three technique setting that edge a little bit earlier on that guard. That guard can no longer climb. Um, and it allows your linebackers to get downhill quick. You can see they're very lateral, and, and, and a guy goes unblocked and makes, makes a great play in the backfield here. 
Yeah, this is a, a really good run run fit here. So uh, as a backside linebacker, as a Sam linebacker here, especially versus this offense, and again, I think this is something you see every day with these QB keepers, right? Because this quarterback typically uh, carries out that, uh, that bootleg action, right? Right. So right here, Thomas is really just squeezing down the line of scrimmage uh, so he can get cut back, quarterback reverse. Uh, it's kind of what it's called. BCR, right? Bootleg yeah. counters and, and reverses. Right, yeah. It's, yeah. it's a ton of acronyms, however you want to call it. <laughs> uh, but he sees the ball is handed off pretty early on this. And they probably also had during the week, they'll let you know, do, do quarterbacks bootleg to the right or boot to their left? Uh, most of the time, obviously, right-handed quarterbacks want to go out um, to uh, the defensive's left, which is going to be their throwing hand. So he, you could be even faster where Thomas is because most quarterbacks are not going to come out that way. Um, and that's all you're doing. You have your eyes on the end line of scrimmage, looking at the mesh point where the ha quarterback is handing it off, and then you make a decision from there. Right. Um, you can make a lot of plays from the backside, especially with Thomas' speed. And I know I made a couple last year just running things down if you have really good eyes. Definitely. And, and you know, we know last year – you know, you came on, I mean, it was lightning in a bottle. It was great to see, again, you know, especially the track that your career has taken. Um, but you came on as more of a rusher and, and a run defender, right? I mean, I know uh, last season you were in coverage a decent amount, but it seemed like last year you came on gangbusters when it came to getting to the quarterback. Yeah, well, I finally got healthy. Um, as I mentioned earlier in uh, 2013 when I signed my free agent deal uh, in Arizona, I tore my Liz Frank in the – the third week of the, the season. Mm -hmm. and it really took me two two years to even start feeling like myself. Um, then I went to Oakland, got really healthy, played well that year on special teams, and was going to have the same role in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, but with guys going down, Shaq got hurt, IK got hurt, and then we had a roster move with Manny Lawson. Right. Uh, thrusted me in that starting role, and I have been preparing for it. And um, I just went out there and played the way I knew I was capable of. I mean, obviously nobody knew about me because I hadn't been really around in the forefront in the last two or three seasons because of my injury. Right. Um, so, and, and then also it was my first year of really getting opportunities of just being able to play 50, 60 snaps and be able to set up guys rushing uh, throughout the duration of a game and, and uh, be able to beat guys. Because, I mean, you know, everybody around this league rushes, you know, seven, 800 times a year. You know, you look at Von Miller, you look at um, Khalil Mack, and those guys get 15 or 16 sacks. Right. It takes you all game sometimes before you can get one. <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely. You know, kind of relegated to maybe 10 to 12 rushes. It's right. hard to put up those type of numbers. So um, I think with the opportunity, my health, and with the scheme last year, understanding how to play in it, uh, really gave me a, the ability to put up some pretty good numbers, especially quickly. I mean, I think I had a sack in every game the first seven or eight weeks and then slowed down once I pulled my hamstring, but still was still getting to the pass uh, to the quarterback fairly often. So I had a lot of fun last year. Uh, definitely want to be able to continue to do some of the similar things this year mm -hmm. and uh, produce maybe not the same numbers, but, you know, pressure and help guys win, help guys come free and put a pressure on the, on the quarterback this year to help our back end. Definitely. And you played uh, just over 73% of the snaps and you can see on the screen that, yeah, you got to rush the passer 386 times last year. So you definitely had a lot more opportunities to do so. And you, you definitely capitalized on it. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So uh, in the three, four defense, obviously like we're talking, your roles are going to be a little different in this right. four three. So um, last year, as you know, viewers can see on the screen, you were in pass coverage 80 times. Uh, last year so and you had mentioned you you were in a little more coverage towards the end of the year and that was you know it was good to see honestly uh, and, and I alluded to you know seeing you against Le'Veon Bell um, and it, for your career I mean it, it seemed like um, last year obviously your numbers were a lot better but um, you know you, you took about 10 percent of the snaps in pass coverage uh, 49 percent uh, rushing the passer uh, and, and again you just man you went you went lights out and it was great to see uh, but I want to put it in perspective as far as, you know, your role this coming year and in and, and pass coverage, because you're going to be in a lot more space, as you alluded to earlier. You're going to be right. uh, accounting for, you know, certain zones. You're not always going to be running forward, right? Right. No, not at all. I mean, we play a lot of cover one, cover three, cover four, mixing it up. And on those downs, first and second down predominantly, I'll be one of the linebackers in coverage where last year I may be rushing, I may not be, depending on – the strength of the defense. So, right. you know, obviously those numbers could double or triple very easily 
no doubt. As long as I can stay healthy for, for a full 16-game schedule. Um, so this offseason, just really been focusing on doing a lot of that. Uh, trimmed down a little bit, leaned up, just because I know I'm going to have to run with guys. Um, and, you know, just be in space. I'm used to being in space because of special teams. I mean, I think that's the ultimate space. No doubt. Phase of, of, of football. Um, be able to run down with somebody, you know, bothering you and try to tackle some somebody running at you full speed uh, so the space being in space doesn't bother me it's just you know make sure you have good eyes getting to your landmarks being patient uh, sometimes you you can get a little flustered and see too much when you haven't done it often enough and again that's why it's been so vital for me to be at OTAs and then on a Friday when I travel back home or a Saturday when I have some extra time I get with my trainer who actually played running uh, receiver in college and just get with him and, and, and continue to work on some some one-on-one stuff, some zone things. Right. Breaking to the ball, setting up, uh, just so I can get as many reps as possible uh, because I know that's where I'm going to be needed. And then also because people know I haven't done it, they're going to test me until I show them, don't mess with me. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and that's fine. Bring it. You know, I want yeah. to compete. Get me, I, you know, I want to get my hands on some balls. Uh, and be able to get one in the end zone this year and, and not get ran down. And uh, hopefully my man, Adolphus Washington, I always call him out. Him this year instead of getting in my way. Right. No, that was, uh, that was a great play, though, man. I, <laughs> uh, and that's, that's actually one of the games I watched. Uh, you had mentioned it. And, um, you know, to see you in coverage uh, a little bit more was kind of cool to see. And, you know, what, what are you down to as far as weight goes right now? Um, I'm kind of fluctuating between 235 and 240 right now. Normally at this time of the year, I'm probably around 245. Okay. So I definitely want to come into camp at a solid 235 and uh, just be able to run. Um, I don't know if you saw me post my 40, but just trying to get faster. Yeah, uh, you know what? Uh, get my Madden uh, speed it up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get that roster change so they can up your uh, up your yeah. speed on Madden, right? <laughs> yeah, I already said he's going to do it for me, so uh, I'm, I'm happy about that. No, that was awesome to see, and and uh, happy belated birthday, obviously. Welcome to 34, because I'm 34 myself, believe it or not. <laughs> so, uh, no, it was awesome. You ran, what, a 4.65, was it? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Yeah, so I can move a little bit. That's awesome, man. And, you know, you're going to use those skills a lot this year, as we mentioned. And I'm going to bring up some film here uh, in regards to, uh, you know, seeing you in coverage. And that's something you're going to be doing a lot more. You're going to be in a space a lot more. And so I, I kind of want to cover just some base coverages that you're going to be playing in, uh, in this defense. And right now you're going to see on the screen, it's going to just be a, a, a base defense and, and uh, you know, cover three defense here. So talk us through – uh, let's start with Shaq. Okay. You can see he's, uh, obviously the hook, uh, the flats defender here. Where are your eyes when, when the ball snapped here? Um, you're reading through the three, your eyes are on the quarterback initially. Mm -hmm. Um, just trying to make sure it's not a three-step drop. Um, and then once that happens, you just want to expand. You're trying to initially get underneath that, that slant route by number one. Mm -hmm. You're expanding with number two, trying to stay off, trying to play over the top of him with some depth. Right, and that's what you know. Shaq does a great job of doing that. You see him take an angle here uh, to take away that you know three-step slant, but also keep that flat, uh, you know, flat route by the tight end there in his uh, in his vision and, and leverage it really well. So, Lorenzo, where are your eyes if you're obviously Thomas Davis here, who is the hook to curl defender? Um, same play? thing. Initially, going to start off just reading through the quarterback, making sure it's not a three-step. Um, because he, he probably could have done a little bit better job on this specific play because he could have broke a little faster to that ball through the flat. And then you're just trying to get depth, you know, eight to ten yards, two, two yards outside the, the hashes, and uh, just read the quarterback's eyes. And that's, and, you know, that's exactly what I was going to ask you. What's the depth there? So eight to ten yards is typically a, a good depth for your hook-to-curl uh, responsibilities? Yeah, that's about that. I mean, if, if the quarterback, you know, takes a, a, a longer drop, then you can maybe get, get to 12, you know, depending on who you are. But most of the time, you're going to find yourself around eight to ten yards. Right. Okay. So now we're going to look at uh, a cover two defense, uh, what appears to be a cover two defense uh, versus uh, the Rams. It's a play-action pass um, and, and 12 personnel again. Uh, but it's only it's it's a four man route. You're gonna have uh, two receivers and a tight end go out for a route, and then the play action to the running back. He does slip out into uh, the flat. So, in cover two defense, what's your depth? Where are your eyes? Kind of explain what you're looking for and what Thomas Davis does here to get yeah. this interception. Yeah, it's definitely similar. Um, this actually the tight end kind of sending him inside. He was trying to get his hands on uh, so he could disrupt him so he doesn't get up onto the safety too fast. Um, and he does a good good job of rerouting him. 
Um, in this, though, he's playing a, a hook drop pretty much between the numbers and the, and the hashes and getting vision. Um, getting around again, 8 to 10 yards, um, and then reading the quarterback's eyes. He did a great job on this, uh, just rolling out, um, shuffling, getting a good jump on it. Uh, obviously, there's pressure, too, yeah. on this. Um, and the, it's not a great thrown ball, and he's able to get his hands on it. And a uh, big-time turnover right there for him. Definitely. And that pressure, that four-man pressure is so critical on these. I mean, this is just a simple defense. You know, it's a simple uh, shell coverage. And that, yep. that front four has to be – they have to eat this year. And, and I mean, I, I expect – I think everyone expects those, uh, you know, the front four and even the depth players to come in and, and just eat and, and get after the quarterback. And that, you know, that type of heat on the quarterback does force this inaccurate pass. And I, I just thought this was a great job by Davis Buff. Not only trying to disrupt the tight end, but you see him get his eyes on the quarterback here. He knows the quarterback's hitting the top of his drops. You see him open his hips. I mean, that was beautiful. Yeah, did a great job. Great job. And that's what we try to uh, practice each every day. Definitely. So, um, again, here it is from the tight camera angle. And uh, it, initially it looked like Davis was up near the line of scrimmage, almost like he was going to blitz. But, you know, he gets his uh, – High hat, high hat on the, on the tackle, so he does drop to his own, right? Yeah, I would definitely think this is probably longer yardage, and he was just walking up there just trying to see if they could put him in the count, help right. out his D lineman, because they're not playing run at all in this no. play. So uh, he does a great job of that, and then just, just trying to get back to his landmark. Obviously, he rerouted the tight end very well, um, helps the safety out, and then go makes a great play. Yeah, that was nice. Uh, nice defense by him, and hopefully you can get a few of those this year, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my, I'm trying to get about three, three plus this year. <laughs> so uh, another role that obviously you excelled in was getting after the passer last year, uh, and that's something that you know Thomas Davis did a ton of um, from his you know interchangeable position, whether it be Sam or Will. I mean, he blitzed 15 percent of the time, which was the fifth most in the league. You know, he had 20 total pressures. I mean, last year. I mean, according to Pro Football Focus, you had 49 total pressures. Uh, so do you see yourself being on the field a lot more in these, you know, obvious passing situations? And if so, what type of role can we expect? Yeah, I'll be out there. I mean, there's going to be a rotation, obviously. You want to – any any great team that rushes the passer has a stable of, of guys that can get after it. So as far as ends, whether it's me, Jerry, uh, Shaq, or whoever else, you know, kind of emerges as other guys that we can use uh, throughout the year – uh, will be part of that rotation and defensive end. Um, but I'll also be inside as well sometimes, uh, like I did last year, playing a tackle spot and just kind of working with an end or working with Kyle or Marcel um, in pass rush. So I'll be all over the place, um, which I love because you can never just say, oh, he's going to be here. Right. I like moving around, and, and sometimes I may drop out and, and be in coverage. Uh, so you just try to keep them off balance, and uh, we're doing a great job of installing packages and defenses um, and putting players that are, are um, placing their skill set in, in those areas too because I'm not the only guy that's, that's like that. Right. So I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, implementing that this year as well. So, so they're going to still – I mean, obviously McDermott does uh, a lot of third down situations. He does use exotic blitzes. Uh, I, I mean, I've seen him use inside linebackers in the A-gaps and then kick out, you know, defensive linemen wider in two-point stances. So, I mean, it's something that we saw last year with you where you'd be in a three-tech but in a two-point stance. Are we, so we're going to see some of that this year? Yeah, we'll see some. I mean, because it worked for us last year. I mean, he's not going to just come in and not do things or not put guys in positions that, that they had success in last year. Uh, so we will implement some of this where I'm the, the, the fourth rusher, but I'm a D-tackle essentially in this and be working with in this – working with Lorente, yeah. able, able to get some pressure. And obviously Jerry uh, forced the quarterback to me in this as well. Um, so I'm, you know, definitely looking forward to continue to work with these guys and having sh the emergence of Shaq will, will only help us uh, continue to be great at what we do this year. Yeah, this was a nice, uh, nice twist between you and McCray here. And uh, um, I, I like your hand usage here. Once you uh, did get on to, you know, one-on-one -on -one with the tackle, that right hand right there, mm -hmm. you know, getting right by. And, of course, uh, Hughes pressure. Um, especially coming from, uh, you know, it looked like he went a little high and you came low. So it was a good, a good rush and sack by you on this play versus the Rams. Yeah, and that was probably one of my best, better games this year. So had a lot of fun out here. And here goes another one just setting yeah. them up. Um, this was a three-man game uh, with um, me, Jerry, and Kyle. Uh, Jerry did a great job of, of forcing him out. Kyle made him bubble out, and I just tried to track him down. This could have been number four, but uh, – <laughs> And Nikhil got, uh, got uh, his second pick of the game. So 
Yeah, he kind of stole the thunder towards the end of that game, too. You know, he got the, the pick six. And then, uh, you know, this interception the, to, to end of the game. So you're talking about this three-man game. This is, uh, you know, something you had talked about, you know, seeing you in a two-point stance as – because you had great leverage being a former defensive lineman. You, you know, you're good with leverage. You're good with timing these games because that's, that's part of this uh, right. being and a pass rusher, right? Right. And that, and that experience has really helped me out. You know, I can talk the same language as Cal because I've been in that world before. Uh, where sometimes you have guys, linebackers, who've never been in, in the trenches, you know, in a three technique. And it's, it's the uh, timing and just the execution of certain things just a little bit off just because they don't have a lot of experience. So um, that background definitely helped me set guys up and, and allowed me to make a lot of plays there too, uh, to be able to, you know, bounce around and make some plays. So it was uh, enjoyable. So it, it, was, it was good. I wish I could have got this one because this would have been – I'd have been off the chain right there. Call him down, but uh, he was like, no. <laughs> yeah, when you slam a guy, they want to throw a flag, you know? So. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was a great job. It was an awesome game. And this is something, I mean, you and Kyle did work last year when it came to these twists and games and, uh, you know, TE-type stunts, stuff like that. Um, you guys did a great job of and, – and that nonverbal, again, you alluded to it. You, you, you know what he wants to do, where he's attacking, so you're able to play off of it, right? Yeah, he's one of the best in the business. He's probably the smartest guy I've played with next to London Fletcher, um, just as far as understanding uh, schemes and pass protections. And then throughout the week, you know, we work on our signals and our lingo. Okay, this is what we want to do. And then obviously after playing with him for a complete season, uh, we can we can uh, just feel each other and what we're going to do. And it is, becomes more natural and, and guys make a lot of plays. So I asked you, I mean, this this was a sequence that you – uh, you said that was one of your favorite plays, obviously, besides the big hit and the special teams play in, yeah. in this game um, that everyone obviously knows. We, we see that week in and week out with you as far as covering kicks and whatnot. Um, so the other play that you had mentioned um, was a play, uh, a, a run play by Gurley um, that you had picked up on a check, a run check, right, during the week in the broadcast, uh, yeah, in the broadcast the video? And then, yeah, I, I forgot what the check was. But And then during the game, they did it a couple of times, and then I was able to uh, alert our defense, like, it's coming this way. And, and yeah. And they ran it towards me, and I was able to, you know, get off the ball fairly quickly, shed the blocker, and, and get a tackle for loss. So here's a play right here, and it's another uh, 12 personnel set. Um, and they motion the tight end onto the line of scrimmage. And I'm going to play the sound for you real quick, Lorenzo, because you can actually hear the run check. And if I can hear it correctly, it's called Boy George. <laughs> <Here you go. laughs> All right, so, so let's listen into this real quick because you, you're right. As soon as they, they say that run check, you, you start pointing. They're like, it's coming over here. So let's take a listen to this real quick. First and goal at the eight. Gurley. Out of bounds, Alexander. Flag is thrown. Baffled has his hands full. He's going to be working on Okay, so you heard the, the run check there. Were you able to hear that? Yeah, I heard it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, George. yeah. So, so, so what are your eyes here? I mean, you obviously know the play is coming at you. You, yeah, you knew that. My blocker, because you can't just run to the ball without defeating your man first. Right. So my, my, I, you know, once I knew the play, I knew I was going to win this. Uh, just getting to the tight end as quick as I could, set the edge and then rip off the block. And obviously Kyle made it even easier for me because he got great penetration as usual and made Gurley bounce even wider. Yeah. Well, he was running lateral by the time he got to me, so it was an easy tackle. Yeah, that penetration from Kyle at that, you know, position right there on this outside zone is a killer because, honestly, um, you know, based on your alignment, more than likely Gurley wants to cut this back. He, I mean, this is an outside zone play that we're going to see on, on our offense, you know, quite a bit yeah. this year. Um, but that penetration from Kyle and that three tech and that inside move just blows the play up because it forces him wide right to you, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then if he decides he wants to cut back, you see big spikes running through the through the hole. So doing a great job of reading off his blockers and his D line and and running to the ball as well. Yeah. And this play actually there was a holding play, but it was cool to to kind of hear that too. You know that run check and I mean you call it out immediately. That was an awesome play. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was fun. We won that game too, so it was a good one. Definitely. And you guys definitely uh, dominated that game. Um, and, and this is the last play I want to break down with you because this is, uh, you know, your strip sack uh, versus uh, the New York Jets and in, the, in a Thursday night game, right? Yeah. Yeah. The second game of the season, actually playing against uh, my former defensive coordinator, Ty Bowles, who's with the Jets. 
Okay. Uh, so that was kind of special for me to be able to perform this this way because I he he originally brought me to Arizona, then I got hurt and kind of felt I wasn't the same player. So to kind of, you know, allow him to see what I was capable of doing was kind of cool. Oh, um, I can only imagine. Yeah, so um, but yeah. So on this one just had a great, a great get off. Um I think this is Claddy. Claddy, yep. Claddy. Uh just watching him on film all week, he just had a knack for uh opening up and kind of opening the door for me, as you can see. Right there, really right. Where anymore? His butt is to the sideline. Yeah. I was able to get a good rip and dip. And then when I turned the corner, just, you know, run, run, reach, as we call it, and was able to get my hand on the ball. So a sack, strip, fumble. I just wish we could have recovered this uh, this ball. It could have been a big game changer as far as winning the game. Yeah, this is great because you're right. He, I mean, he – He's he's a pretty athletic guy, but right. he does leave that door open right there. You see, I mean, you got him. That that you can see his left foot right there. Right. That's not that's not staying square. Yeah, and he's also had the same Liz Frank injury. So since then, he's he's done more of that, uh, just trying to compensate for because his was worse than mine. So I uh, was able to see that on film all week, and definitely wanted to work his edge and stay high on him. So I mean, that's something you knew in the scouting report. His injury and his uh, obviously you picked up on the tendency of being him being open, but I mean. Those are the type of things that you guys scout and, and, and get on film or, you know, paperwork that are given to you from coaches or uh, the advanced yeah. scouts, right? Exactly. And then we also do our own film study, uh, you know, with the iPads. And we actually do a report ourselves um, to present to all the D linemen. I don't know how we're going to do it this year, but that's what we did last year. Everybody picked a guy that you're going to be facing and kind of broke him down uh, because ultimately that's, that's when you really – you know, retain information when you do the work, not when it's given to you. No doubt. Um, so um, that was also another big part of my game this year, just studying the guys I were going to go to and see their tendencies and then talk to Kyle and Marcel about uh, what they saw in Jerry as well. And that really helped uh, help my game. Man, this is just a great play. I love your bend and, and, and you turn, you run the, the, uh, the hoop there, they run the arc and it's just an awesome play. As soon as his arm's going back, you get a piece of it. It's beautiful. Yeah. Appreciate it. Oh, I was trying to catch you. I knew it came out. You were just looking for Where is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so frustrating because, like, there's so many plays like that. You know, it's just, ah. Oh. But, uh, no, I appreciate uh, you breaking down film with me, man. So let's kind of talk about, you know, where can we find you? What can we expect from you, you know, throughout your Instagram, your Twitter, whatever you got going on? Yeah, you know, you can always find me, One Man Gang 97. I know I'm 57. I just never changed it. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter, Lorenzo underscore John, but I will warn you, I have to accept you and you may be stuck in the friend, the, the friend zone for a while, you know, until <laughs> I click accept, I'm sorry. Um, and then also my foundation, LorenzoAlexander.org, always trying to do some stuff. Um, Aces underscore foundation on Twitter. Um, you can keep up what we're doing in the community as well. Uh, always trying to get back to the Buffalo area. Uh, the city's really embraced me and I uh, just love being a Buffalo Bill and like I said earlier, I really want to be able to retire here. Hopefully, I got a, you know a few more years playing at a high level, and, and that'll be able to become a reality. So, uh, looking forward to it. Hopefully, I see people around. You see me in the community, come up, say what's up. You know, I'm approachable. Love taking pics and signing autographs, especially for the kids. Uh, get at me anytime. Now, Lorenzo, I appreciate you coming on, and you know, I'll post all the all of the links to you know where people can find you, especially your foundation, because honestly, we you know we get to see what you do. Uh, a lot on Sundays, but it's, uh, you know, the, the big difference that you're making is more off the field. So anytime that, you know, we can help, you know, send those links out and, and bring awareness to whatever. I know you played, uh, you know, in the home run derby, and whatnot with shady this, uh, this, this past weekend. So um, I appreciate everything you do on the field on Sundays, but even more so off the field, Zoe, and, and hope to have you on again, buddy. Artie, I appreciate it. We'll do that. Thanks brother. All right.